Hi guys, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason, bringing you today's episode. My fuzzy co-star is running around here somewhere. I'm sure she'll make an appearance. So for today, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. We've got a lot of videos coming out for you guys. We'd really appreciate having our fans out there. Um, for today, I want to do another one of our lists, and I want to talk about five really good to great book to movie adaptations. Some of them people may not realize are uh, um, are war books uh, because the movies so overshadowed how uh, how great the books were. I mean, the books were of course big, but these movies certainly overshadowed. And some are going to be pretty damn obvious. So the first one I want to start out with that's really obvious: Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock. Now, there are a ton of adaptations, an absolute ton of adaptations. So the ones I want to use, now my fuzzy co-star is winding down here, the ones I want to use are the Robert Downey Jr. ones. Uh, of course, we've got the Benedict Cumberbatch uh, made-for-TV ones. Uh, those are absolutely fantastic, um, but much more modern times. Uh, just like most of the, the uh, uh, movies and TV shows lately, dealing with Sherlock are, are modern times. Um, translated, I suppose. Well, the Robert Downey Jr. ones, they really do try and go back to, I guess you could almost say Victorian England in a way. Um, and what I really, really like about them, aside from the fact that they're just fantastic movies, they steal a lot from the plots. Although, of course, they make their own, they, they do changes and twists. You pretty much have to with books to translate them to movies. Plus, when you have something like this that has been done so many times, if you cookie cutter straight from the books, it's going to be boring no matter how great the actor is, no matter how great the script is. So there are some things that are different. But what I really, really like about the, this one is that they kept some of the defining traits of Sherlock Holmes that a lot of the, the uh, movies and TV show adaptations get rid of. First off, in the books, he was a bare-knuckle fighter. That shows up in one of the movies. Also in the books, he was a drug user, drug addict. That also shows up in the books um, to his detriment. Uh, so as far as book to movie adaptations go, Sherlock, the Robert Downey Jr. ones, they're really, really good. Um, next one. Again, not a lot of people may realize this was a book, Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Now, fun fact, when it first came out in the theaters, it flopped. It was bought, the rights of it were bought, by uh, Turner Broadcasting, and they thought that the uh, the owner thought it was such a great movie that he pretty much had it on on one of his various channels all the damn time, and it just kind of ended up being a uh, a cult classic. And eventually, people realized just how great of a movie it is. It is based off of a Stephen King short story. It comes from one of his books of short stories. Now, this particular short story isn't exactly what you would call what most people would call short, so a little bit closer to like a novelette. Than, than, uh, than a short story. The short story was absolutely fantastic and the movie follows that short story so well. Obviously changes a few things. Morgan Freeman playing Red, well, you know, Red was the nickname based on the color of his hair, so you could tell there was a little bit of, of uh, minor changes to the characters there. Uh, plus how the, how the ending, ending went was slightly different. A lot of it was very similar, but slightly different. But all in all, Shawshank Redemption absolutely fantastic. In my mind, the Shawshank Redemption it might be the absolute best Stephen King adaptation uh, from a book. Next one, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Now, some people, a lot of people do know this was a book. It was actually a trilogy. The thing is with this one, when I say this is a great book to movie adaptation, I do not mean the American version. American version is, it's not terrible. I've seen it. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. It was fun. If it, you know, if it popped up on my suggested feed, I'd probably go ahead and watch it. But the, uh, I believe it was Swedish uh, version, absolutely phenomenal. Was ab uh, just beyond incredible. Took the book, and I have read the books, took the book and turned it into, it took a fantastic book and turned it into a incredible movie. I mean, it was great. The, the tension that's in the books, the the um, the overarching, you know, bad guys and the evil, and the fact that, that really in the books, they feel out, not, not outgunned, but but uh, outmatched, overwhelmed. I mean, they're basically going up against monoliths. And the movie really, really does manage to, to, um, to show that, to show that and, and uh, the stakes, the stakes that they feel are, are up for grabs. 
Now, the next one, I would say people, my generation and older, would, would realize these were, were books, at least the originals, um, the Bourne movies. And this one I'm, I'm lumping in the first three. The first three Bourne movies, um, the Bourne Identity, Bourne Suppression, uh, Supremacy, Bourne Ultimatum, I read the original books. I uh, read them a long, long time ago. Now, there have been new ones that have come out since, uh, not the original author, a fantastic author. I want to say it's Eric Van Lusbader that's written the new ones, uh, while the original ones were Robert Ludlum. Um, and I've, I've actually met Lusbader. I've got a bunch of his books books uh, signed, but he was no Ludlum. Lusbader writes some incredible, incredible, incredible stuff. But uh, but Born, Born was written by Ludlum, and... Those books were absolutely fantastic. Now, there are a lot of changes from the books to the movies, the, the Matt Damon movies. For instance, in, in uh, two of the books, Bourne is much older. You're talking 50s, 60s. I mean, he is much, much, much older. But the overall tone of the books, they translated so well into the movies. The, the, um, the cleverness of Bourne, the fact that he is so, so experienced and, and so, so, um, so, so well trained and so calm almost all the time. Now in the books they have a lot of, they have some internal monologues that, that tell you he's not always quite so calm, but as far as outward appearances go, Bourne always feels, seems to feel like he is in absolute control. And those movies really, really, really did manage to show that. Even when things were going wrong, when people were dying around him and stuff like that, you, you always had the sense that, that it was all part of the plan. And then something would go wrong, you know, he'd end up in a fight for his life. And uh, the books also really managed to give out this, this sense that Bourne was, was such a dangerous individual when he was pushed and the the movies also show that how how dangerous and and capable Jason Bourne really was now the last one this again most people know this is a book but this is one that a lot of people really have not read Forrest Gump Forrest Gump was originally a book he did write a sequel by the way and the sequel has been been um, optioned for for movies but I doubt it's ever gonna be made and the thing is the from the book to the movie they changed an enormous amount of stuff, but they kind of they, they kind of kept the the underlying I guess tone of, of Forrest Gump from the book to the movie as far as as involvement in history and kind of a witness to history. Um, you know the the movie definitely makes it seem like he's he's much more of a catalyst to a lot of historical events. Um, but the, the the reason this lands on my great book to movie adaptations is unlike the rest of the ones that I've talked about, this one took a good book and turned it into an absolutely great to phenomenal movie. To some people, it hasn't held up well uh, um, over the years, but very 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 few movies do because mindsets change, cultural norms change, things on those lines. But as a movie, it was absolutely fantastic. It was incredible, and the book was just good. It was a good book, but nothing compared to how the movie is. And the movie wisely changed quite a few things about Forrest Gump. That naivete is, is, is um, much, much better done in, in the movies. In the books, Forrest Gump is actually kind of a dick. In the movies, he's almost a naive, childlike figure that's almost swept along with, with all these historical events and finds himself in involved in all these with, with absolutely no clue. The movie even ends with them really not understanding what a cultural phenomenon he was. And uh, um, and that's why the movie ended up such a cultural phenomenon. So if you guys haven't read the books associated with these, I, I assume most of you guys read Arthur Conan Doyle, but if you guys haven't read the, the books or the novelettes like Shawshank Redemption that, uh, that are associated with all these, and I told you my fuzzy co-star would make an appearance, um, you guys gotta go check them out, especially the Bourne books. The Bourne books are really, really good. And, again, they're slightly different from the movies, so they'll be fun little reads. Go check them out, guys. After you hit those like and subscribe buttons, we appreciate all of you guys watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.